Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. I uh, recently read an article by uh, Jeffrey Tucker, uh, and he was talking about uh, the, I guess the Principality of Sealand. It's basically a uh, an old uh, World War II fort that was uh, built out in the English Channel, uh, up in the North Sea, and uh, the British government abandoned it back in the 60s. And... Uh, a, a radio uh, pirate broadcaster by the name of uh, Roy Patty Bates actually took over the platform and since the the platform was in international water he actually declared it his own country uh, they've actually fought the issue in courts and uh, to some degree they've been able to live uh, somewhat independently from the UK while at the same time enjoying a somewhat friendly relationship with the with the British government, uh, from what I understand, the the folks that consider themselves the royal family of Sealand actually uh, spend quite a bit of time in the UK. So it's a uh, it's kind of a very interesting uh, situation. And you know, Jeffrey like brought up the whole subject of micro nations. So I uh, I did a little research on them. And you know it's kind of interesting that uh, these are some pretty uh, some pretty independent folks. I don't know as in all cases they would necessarily be uh, anarcho capitalists because in a way I mean they're they're separating from uh, a government that they didn't like, but in most cases they're creating kind of like their own ideal government. So so they're still looking for government uh, in the case of. Uh, Sealand, really, it's just it's one family that uh, owns the platform, and you know they do some business uh, on the platform. I guess some IT business and uh, various things of that nature, uh, particularly like a data haven. So, you know, in the scheme of things, while they may consider themselves a government, it's just sort of to talk to, you know, like the British government and stuff. Because, you know, to declare their own sovereignty, they have to have some of the trappings of, of sovereignty. I mean, they're not really imposing their, their rule on anyone. It's just their family. And, you know, they'll have employees that may live out there. But, uh, again, these are people who voluntarily come out there to live. And, you know, they stay as long as they, they want to. And if they want to leave, they leave. And... I don't know if they ever have to actually like become citizens while they're there, but I would guess that uh, most of them are dual citizens, where you know they still enjoy UK uh, UK citizenship, or you know the US, wherever wherever they happen to be from. I would imagine there's even some Europeans out there. I've never actually uh, had the opportunity to talk to to Prince Michael, although uh, I actually know a few guys that have uh, been interested in that. And have, have had a chance to, to chat with him in, in one form or another. Uh, some people actually think that that would be a, an interesting way for anarcho-capitalists to uh, find a place where they could actually have some additional liberty. Uh, the only problem is sea land's not particularly big. Uh, I think it's around 5,000 square feet. So that's probably like interior room. And then there's like a platform outside with like a helipad. So, so it's not a particularly big thing. I mean, short of... You know, short of using dredges and uh, and dumping a whole bunch of uh, earth at the the foot of sea land, you know, which is just a, basically an ocean platform that looks kind of like a small dr uh, oil drilling rig, you know, or two silos with uh, you know a flat uh, roof on it or a flat platform built on the top of the silos, but um, you know, short of dropping a whole bunch of soil out there, and and I don't see where there'd be a lot of room to do much. I suppose you could like more houseboats up to the footing of it, you know, with their permission, of course. But uh, I've I haven't seen any pictures where anybody's really enjoyed any kind of ability to stay there for any length of time. And the North Sea is not particularly warm, by the way. Even in the the middle of summer, I would imagine that water temperature is probably below 70. So it's a little on the chilly side for most people. Um, there are actually other micronations around the world. Um, Sealand enjoys a sort of sovereignty 
that uh, most countries don't enjoy. But uh, there's also one in Australia, and it's called uh, the Hutt River, I guess it was called the Hutt River Province initially, uh, the Principality of Hutt River. Uh, they only their own national anthem, and they're, although it was originally a, a large wheat farm, and, and I, I mean large, <laughs> but uh, although it was a wheat farm, they haven't been required to pay uh, any kind of uh, income taxes or any kind of tariffs since they uh, declared their sovereignty back in the 60s, I believe, and uh, right around the same time as uh, a sea land. And uh, I, I guess Sealand and Hutt River both used sort of a loophole in um, English law at the time, or Commonwealth law at the time, to actually declare themselves principalities. And by doing so, they were able to open up uh, the possibility that they are indeed sovereign nations. So, uh, by the way, it's, it's a loophole from what I understand that's been closed since then. Although uh, Australia does seem to enjoy... Um, having several more micronations there. Uh, Hot River, I, I think, has them kind of all beat with, you know, what looks to be a, a fairly stable uh, independence from the Australian government. And there's, a, there's another island near Australia uh, called Norfolk Island that uh, really is not uh, a micronation of sorts. Uh, that's actually considered part of Australia. But uh, for a lot of anarcho-capitalists, it would probably be like the next closest thing. As from what I understand, the, the folks in, uh, in Norfolk Island, um, as well as some other British Commonwealth uh, small islands, they enjoy like a tax-free status. Um, a lot of people are familiar with like Bermuda uh, being, you know, kind of like a tax haven. Uh, the Cayman Islands, although I think I don't know if that's part of the British Commonwealth, but uh, islands like um, Montserrat in the Caribbean, uh, Pitcairn Island in the uh, in the Pacific Ocean, and Norfolk Island. Uh, the last two of which were both uh, related to you know the mutiny on the bounty. Um, Mr. Christian, I believe he was. Um, they originally settled on Pitcairn Island, and then a lot of the survivors, not all of them, some stayed on Pitcairn Island, but some of the survivors from the bounty, uh, from the mutiny actually went over to Norfolk Island. So they've got sort of a, uh, an interesting history there. Very independent also. So, I mean, there are a bunch of places in the world where Life is a hell of a lot more free than what we get to enjoy here in the U.S. And, you know, even, even a tax-free existence, which, you know, nobody in the U.S. has really gotten to enjoy since the, uh, what was it, 1913, you know, was when the income tax was first instituted. But it didn't, like, really kick in, I guess, until the 30s, 30s something like that. Um... Hot River Province, again, is, is really just, it was a family farm, a family wheat farm. So, uh, while they, uh, both Sealand and Hot River enjoy um, some of the trappings of sovereignty, like uh, issuing their own uh, currency or uh, coinage, since they both, well, I mean, a lot of countries issue silver coins and stuff, but um, they issue stamps. Uh, sometimes they issue ID cards, passports, although I believe uh, Sealand actually kind of cut back on that since there was some, uh, I don't know, some kind of uh, criminal involvement in uh, using their uh, their passports to travel around Europe. So they actually suspended those. Um, Sealand actually sells, I can't even remember what, you want to call it? Oh yeah, they they actually sell titles, uh, and, and Jeffrey Tucker kind of covered that in his article a little bit. Uh, by the way, I'll uh, I'll make sure I link uh, to Jeffrey's article uh, if I can find it again, which I should be able to, and uh, I'll put that down in the description. 
I'll also like try to make sure I include some uh, some other links for uh, you know perhaps like uh, Pitcairn Island, Norfolk Island, and uh, and Hutt River Province, as I, I find them all pretty interesting. Um, I really don't have a lot for the show uh, today, so I think I'm going to actually wrap it up a, a, a fairly decently early. Um, I'm hoping to have some more uh, improvements finished for next week uh, with uh, actually the, the area that I'd like to be recording a lot of these videos. Uh, I'm kind of limited in, uh, in where I have to record in the in the home right now. So uh, given a little time, I'll uh, I'll get that fixed up and... We'll be able to do some uh, a little bit more in-depth videos. Not to mention the fact that I'll be able to do some uh, some video editing and be able to actually do some uh, some stuff where I'm actually showing you some of the the stuff that I'm doing or we're talking about during the videos. So uh, I hope you all have a good weekend. Uh, enjoy your Friday night, and you know please remember if you're you're watching the video. And uh, you like what you've seen on any of the videos here on uh, the Voluntary Virtues Network, please make sure you click like and if you could please subscribe, that'd be fantastic. You guys all have a great night.